Hello, I'm EVM. This is Harry. Hello. We have three different Kia Neros, a hybrid, a plug-in hybrid, and a full electric version of essentially the, same, the car. same car. So it's a great comparison, thanks to Kia for lending them to us over several weeks. Harry's been driving these each week instead of his own car. So this mm -hmm. is real world testing, miles per gallon, miles per kilowatt hour, yep. to see whether it's actually worth going for a plug-in hybrid over a hybrid, uh, full electric over okay. either of yeah. them. Yes, this is just this car and Harry's driving stand, but we're talking nearly 200 miles each car each week. Yeah. So it's as close as a comparison as you could possibly I think get. My, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I think my uh, standard pattern each week is probably the same as a lot of people. Yeah, it's it's mean, the it, commute to exactly, and from work. Yeah. It, it's real world rather than going off the manufacturer's stats. So we'll give you all those. We'll obviously have to get the whiteboard involved because it's too much to talk about. But essentially, is it still cheaper to drive an EV over a petrol car. That's the premise. There you go. Okay, now this is the information that we've gleaned over the last few weeks. This is based on using it as, as you should. We've plugged in the plug-in hybrid. Of course, we've plugged in the uh, battery car and all you can do is put petrol in the HEV. Um, so yes, this is the cost of the cheapest version of each of these variants. This is the efficiency that we've got, and the important one at the end, the pence per mile for fuel. Pretty straightforward for the HEV. You can't plug it in, so it's just fuel costs. The FEV, I've included obviously the petrol and the uh, electric costs that we've got from Harry's uh, charger. It tells you exactly how much it's used, losses included. Um, and the full electric version, obviously that's just that's just plugging it in. So that's electric costs essentially. That got 4.3 miles per kilowatt hour. The Nero EV is very efficient. 242 miles per gallon in the FEV and 51.9 in the HEV. You'll notice there's two figures for the FEV and three for the battery electric. That's because this one is based on the price cap. This price is based on if you're on the time of day tariff. In this case, it's Octopus Go, but there are others. I've also included in that price the extra cost it would uh, well create for your standard house usage because the time of day tariff in this case has got four hours of cheap, 20 hours where it's more expensive than the price cap. So I've factored in the more expensive electricity for the house based on UK averages and then added that to that. So it's part of the mix. It's okay charging your car cheaply for that four hours, but it does have a knock on effect for other things. Uh, this is the same. That's based on the price cap. That's based on Octopus Go in the real world. So of course, you're not gonna have a full electric vehicle that is purely charged at night on the cheap rate. So that includes um, a good percentage for public charging at the average price for that, um, a percentage as well for peak rate charging so that's that's a realistic mixture of the three and the bottom one is the public charging network because not everybody can charge at home of course 12.9 pence per mile for the hybrid on the price cap 12.3 pence for the plug-in hybrid so the difference between that and that is almost non-existent when it comes to the fev so if you're on the price cap you're not on a time of day tariff there's no real difference between the plug-in and the non-plug-in. If you are on the correct tariff though, or, or, or a better tariff for the car, again, factoring in the extra house cost, then it is about five pence cheaper than the standard hybrid. But as you'll know, it's a lot more expensive to buy. However, the depreciation on that and that would in theory mean that they will go down, go down together. Now it's possible that the gap of let's say £6,000, will remain. Is a three-year-old FEV in whichever car we're looking at, not just the Nero, still £6,000 extra than the HEV? You know, or does it close? You know, you've got to factor in the total cost of ownership to do the true comparison. Um, so depreciation is something that, again, that, that's not what this video is about. It's just fuel costs. So then at least you've got one part or one piece of the puzzle. Battery electric vehicle, obviously you charge at home. Um, then on the price cap, it would be just shy of eight pence per mile. Then you've got the, what I would call realistic go price. So this is for me, the tariff you would realistically want to be on. It's the one I'm on, not just go, but a, a time of day use tariff, uh, five and a half pence, as opposed to 13 pence nearly, 12, seven. So 
clearly in terms of fuel alone, the full electric version is the cheapest if you're on the right tariff. If you're on the price cap, it's still cheaper than a car that does 51.9 miles per gallon. So it is still the case that electric is cheaper than petrol, but not always because this one here it is, if you can't charge at home and you have to solely rely on the public charging network, 15.1 pence per mile. It is by quite a margin, the most expensive one on this table. So look at the difference, five and a half pence, 15 nearly 10 pence per mile difference by having that ability to charge from home. So ultimately the take home from this is that the most expensive car can be the cheapest, but it also could be the most expensive to run. The plug-in hybrid isn't any cheaper than the standard hybrid on the price cap, but it is on go. I mean, we'll come to the summary and, and chat about it in a minute, but yeah. Where would your car come in this? If you have a diesel car, for example, which obviously won't be a plug-in, then what's the miles per gallon? Over the whole life of the car, not just over the last week or when you're going on a long run, if you have that uh, figure, what is the MPG for the whole life of the car? And then, and then at least it gives you the pence per mile. You can see where it come here. The battery electric vehicle would vary some, you know, what aren't this efficient, so that would be more expensive. So again, please use this as a guide. But ultimately, when it comes to the Nero, yes, electric is still the cheapest way, with some caveats. So, does this change things? Many, many people have said that electric is more expensive now. And again, depending on what, we, what we're looking at, uh, it is and it isn't. For me, it absolutely is the cheapest, is electric still. But I have that benefit of charging from home. I have a little bit of solar occasionally that helps but ultimately it's the tariff that makes the big difference and I do lots of miles but all from home so there's not there's not the traveling salesman thing where you'd have to use the public charging network which clearly at the moment is uh, not in favor in terms of fuel costs. I do envisage that uh, the price of the public charging network will come down over the next few months along with the electric prices as a whole that, that is predicted so this hopefully will get cheaper again who knows what petrol prices will do. Um, as we've seen, uh, worldwide events can massively affect the prices of both of these overnight almost. So anyway, let's have a bit of a chat with it, back with Harry. Um, there you go, what do you think? So let's summarize what essentially we've just put on the whiteboard and yeah. not film this back to back at all no. before I've done the whiteboard thing. If you can't plug in at home. If you can't plug in at home. There's no point in getting the Fev. Nope because the public charging infrastructure will be not be uh, cheap enough to run it. Yeah. So basically, just get, no, just get a hybrid. Yeah, so the point that Fevis bought, full electric vehicle, if you can't plug in at home, it's completely is more expensive yeah. Yeah. using the public charging network, although it, it does vary, as I said. So ultimately, that's off the if you can't plug in at home, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Just get a, 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 a standard hybrid. Save yourself hybrid. some money, get yeah. your standard hybrid. A non-plug-in vehicle. Yeah. There's going to be people that can charge at work I mean, I think cheaply. If, you know, there's going to be. If uh, you could if, guarantee yeah. you could charge at work every day and, yeah. and charge your battery, then ideal. There's but, exceptions to yeah. everything we're saying today, essentially, but isn't it? Essentially, if you can't charge at home, it's probably off the list. If you can charge at home, it's very nuanced, isn't it? Yeah. Because think, it depends on so many different things. Yeah. Uh, it does every, really. Everyone's different. I think the plug in hybrid really works if your journey is going to be around 30 miles before. Yeah, yeah, a day. yeah. No more than 40, say. Yeah. And then you can plug in at the end mm. of each day. But then realistically, you're using the engine just as a range extender. Now you do get 242 miles per gallon. And that wasn't really which, trying. And that's, that's about 40 more than Kia say. Yeah. But do, do, do a I long used journey. I the engine twice. Yeah, do a long journey. It's going to drop, isn't it's it? It's going to drop because they're not very good on long journeys and that's where the diesel would win out. Yeah. So again, lots of long journeys, diesel will be cheapest. So the plug-in hybrid, for me, only makes sense for those that could easily get a full electric, but... Well, and too nervous. Even the price isn't enough to put you off between the, the, the Fev and the full electric. Yeah. I think you've hit the nail on the head there, isn't it? It's people who go, well, I quite fancy getting an electric car, but oh, I've heard all these problems about people breaking down and what happens yeah, when Yeah, yeah, yeah. In I, winter, you, you, you die on the motorway. That's never, it. Yeah. Um, I think people would get the plug-in hybrid, like I have this week, last week, sorry, and enjoyed it so much have gone, I should I have just yeah. gone, gone the extra further, especially as in the Kia range, which is just this granted, it's only another £2,800 It'd be silly over the FEV full electric version. <laughs> that is cheaper it is. if you're on the right tariff 
um, even on the realistic thing I explained over or, or earlier. So that's two and a half to three thousand pounds uh, cheaper over thirty thousand miles, which, which is isn't, roughly three. isn't as much as a saving as, as it typically used to be. I used to save one hundred and seventy pounds a month. Yeah. It, it, it's changed, doesn't it? Because electricity has gone up and petrol's come back down again, so it closes the gap. If, if petrol does that again, yeah, this changes. It's irrelevant. It's a very clear thing for me. You either get the, the hybrid or the full electric. Yeah. I showed the prices on the whiteboard, but to reiterate, 28.3 for the HEV, which, and then a jump to 34 for the like plug-in a hybrid. Money, isn't it? So it's like, well, that really has to justify itself. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be doing the, the man maths game of going, hang on a minute, it's only... Two and a bit more. Yeah, 34 miles, we'll go to 36.8 yeah. to get the full electric version, which will genuinely save me a lot. Yeah. It's, it's one of those ones where it's, it is so difficult to try and get the right car for the right person now. Yes, and I think it's worth mentioning that on the public charging infrastructure, it's more expensive yeah, it's, on average, because it, it depends which you use, than a petrol, petrol car, car. Yeah. by itself or a diesel car. Yeah. Now, that's what has changed, doesn't it? Because you used to be able to charge for free occasionally, then it was 20p, no, it 30p. Wasn't much, was it? it was still cheaper, yeah. even if you couldn't charge at home at all. But now, it's, it's uh, gone the other way. Yeah. At least for now, because it, 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 will, it will do this, won't it, over time? Yeah, you would hope so. It come and I suppose, why do they have to be cheaper? Well, it's, this, you know, it's been a big bonus for years. I, I think the thing is that people have got used to it being cheaper as yeah. an incentive to buy an electric vehicle. And, and now, now that's, that's eroded, at least for some people. Yeah. Now, it's okay buying a car for financial purposes, mm -hmm. but it has to be enjoyable as well, especially yeah. when you're spending even 27, 8,000 on the HEV. So, which is the best one to drive out of the three? The full electric. The full electric. Yeah, it's just. More power? It, yeah, it just feels more at home. Torquey. Yeah. I mean, it is, it's got a couple hundred brake horsepower. Yeah. Plug in hybrid or HEV then? Because uh, in my head, it's the, the same, but just one's got bigger battery. The plug in hybrid uh, is a lot more torquey. Right. So I find that I find that a lot more fun to drive. You could hustle it along. Because that had a lower powered petrol engine, didn't it? Yeah, and I presume a higher powered electrical motor. Or at least it could power it for a lot longer. Yeah. So, so that, that felt a lot better. Yeah, that definitely felt a lot better than the uh, the Hev. It's what the Hev like to drive. This with the one we're sighting right now. Uh, it's fine. And every so often, and the same with the plug-in hybrid to a lesser extent. Every so often, this lawnmower sound starts, and it goes. <laughs> So the engine's weedy, which means when you have to rely on it, it spoils your enjoyment does, of the yeah, refinement yeah, yeah. of the electric, electric part of yeah. it. So the cheapest one's worst and the most expensive is best. best. Who'd have thought That's that? That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> With the Fev and the Hev, is you do have that moment of when you do put the, uh, the accelerator down where it almost uh, has to dial in. Oh, yeah. Oh, you want the engine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang on. Vroom. There we go. go. <laughs> to benefit from a plug-in hybrid, you now realistically have to be able to charge from home. Well, you have to have the same things in place as having a, a, a bev. bev. Yeah, including that cheap tariff. Yeah. And I can't believe that if you can afford this at 34 something, you can't afford the 36. The, the 36 Especially as you, you, you know, the, you'll get that at the end. Yeah, and you're going to save if you do it right. Yeah, you'll save. Yeah, yeah. It's so ultimately the fev. Yeah, I guess we're saying the fev's kind of pointless without some real stringent I've towing got a or car yeah. yeah. So basically, caravans are ruining everything, not just for yeah, 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 other yeah, yeah. people, but they're yeah, making again. you buy a Fev. Yeah. <laughs> I expected more out of the Hev, though. What was it, 50 odd It was 50, yeah. In the first couple of days, it was around 20 to 30. And it wasn't until I did a bigger journey, it went up. Built up, now, again. I was expecting to see... 60, 70, 60, 80. 70, 80. I won't lie, yeah, 60, 70, 80. And there's um, no more way of journeys on that. No, I thought, I thought because it was, I mean, it's a brand new car, I thought... Maybe there's something wrong with it. Maybe there's, <laughs> but no, it, it just. And I've asked, I've asked several people who have uh, heads at various workplaces, and I was trying. Someone's got the uh, a Clio, and he's getting about sixty out of his. Given the size, it's a small yeah, bigger car. car yeah. yeah. So ultimately, a hybrid, a petrol hybrid, has just replaced a diesel. I would well not in the long journey. For MPG, though. well not for, yeah, not for long journeys. I, I, it's almost it's for for me it's an afterthought, isn't it? They've stuck a, a one point something kilowatt battery and electric motor on. Hmm. Just for compliance. It, yeah, so I, 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 I did expect more out of the head, but maybe, like you say, with ownership, maybe a few more months, it might come it down creep a up bit. a bit. Um, but it is just a. Oh, worth a saying as well, easy. when I had the uh, the Fev, <coughs> is that we did have all that snow and it was minus 11 on one day. So that's worst case Fev, and you've yeah. still got 242 miles per gallon. Yeah. In fact, we were going to do the fuel fill up thing, 
So we knew exactly how much petrol is. But it used that le- little that I wouldn't have been able to pay for what I'd Yeah, yeah you have to have a minimum. Yeah, di- yeah. So, yeah. yeah so that just shows how little it did yeah. use. Okay, um, so again, thanks to Kia. Um, it, thanks to Harry for driving around in someone else's car for three weeks oh, instead of his own. Yeah. It just happened to coincide with getting your car fixed. With some warranty work. <laughs> <laughs> But ultimately, Can I miss a car? No, it's okay. Right, okay, thank you uh, to Kia for lending us this. Yeah, let me know. Have you got a FEV, HEV, or electric, or even just diesel? Fuel costs, what's happened to you in the last I'd year? Like to know, why did you get a FEV? Like, subscribe, um, join. Join, which you would get this on a Sunday instead of a Friday. Click on the, the bell. I always like the to end click of the bells. The end of the bell, do you click? Yep. Or do you, I, I, I go full on bell. Do you? I go usually end of the bell. Well, whatever your preference is, <coughs> you click it. Tickle that bell. Yep. <laughs> Let's go before we start going into depths that Let's... will kill my career. Yes. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Thank you. See you later. Bye.